But in the immediate future, as of yesterday, what I was having a look at is where I was going to mount my ECU. Now on this truck, we're running something that probably most of you have never heard of before. Big Stuff 3. And this one has the capability of doing 16 injections. So, although we're not at the moment, at the moment, watch this space. The engine rules ever change in our sport. We will have the electronic package for the better motor. But until then, oh, I hope they change in the next year or two because six liters is so annoying. It would be so much cheaper to run a big block. Um, yeah, anyway, I've been trying to work out where I'm gonna mount this ECU. And it's hard because the loom that I've got, I know I'm being a bit lazy, but I've got it here on the floor. The loom is um, is already pretty much done, and I don't want to cut it up and start again. Um, and so, because it's already done, the plugs are already on it, which make it very difficult to get through anything. So, my whole idea of having a 100% waterproof in like an IP64 kind of enclosure is going out the window um, the other thing is let me ha let me show you how big this thing is it's fucking massive so I'm trying to remember what Steve's motet looks like but I'm gonna guess it's like two-thirds of this size maybe this thing is huge like here's an enclosure right here this is what I'd planned on putting it in and like, sure, okay, it fits, but there's no way you can get the plugs on. It's a bit of a, uh, bit of a problem right there. So, I'm toying with the idea of making a metal box, a custom metal box, a bit longer. Just big enough so I can get, get the, um, get the plugs in. Um, Obviously, although we're not using the, the top side with the 16 injection, I still want to have access to that in case we ever need it, you know? Because um, we're going to run E85 on this car, and there's some pretty tricky shit you can do if you've got an extra eight injectors. Who knows? Who knows? You could, like, yeah, do all kinds of little things. So, I don't want to just put that in a spot where we're never going to get access to it, not when we've, we've got the ability to use it. So, yeah, just been trying to work out where I'm going to mount that and mount it in a place where it's not too close to things, it's not going to get wet. Because let's face it, even though we like to think we're doing desert racing here in Australia, I've been to races where boats would have trouble getting through, you know. Um, and that's the last thing you want to be putting your uh, very expensive EC3, ECU through, you know. Last thing you want to do is put your MoTeC, or in my case your Big Stuff 3, in like, you know, a metre and a half of muddy water, let's just say, at Magumba. Or not. But yeah, we've got this box here, this is where our PDM's going to go, because we're running PDM on this car. 
Uh, we've gone the race pack option, so we're running all race pack stuff. Um, so we're going to have, and that was the other thing, needed to be fairly close. Our big stuff three already is race pack compatible, which is nice. So our data logger should be able to just take all that information straight out of the ECU, nice and simple, straight onto the VNet cable. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, I'm thinking ECU is going to go up in here. Um, the scary thing about putting it up in here is it's in the Tom zone. And for those that don't know Tom, Tom is a six foot eight giant who can smash it when he's flying around in the air. So we need to make sure it's protected from Tom and his big legs. Which is why I've got it up as high as I can. There is actually a dash a dash here, so it is actually quite far up and behind the dash. So like really he shouldn't go anywhere near it, but I thought that about the last ECU and he still managed to kick it. I don't know what he did, but it's something we just need to be aware of. So, and although, like, this all gets panelled in at the back here. So, this is panelled in. But I'm still thinking we need to build another box. Because you all know, you'll be as careful as you can be when you're cleaning your car after an event. But, there'll be that one time and you'll be like, oh yeah, and you'll forget about something. You'll be talking to someone and you'll high pressure hose your ECU. And we don't want that. Because I think it's pretty pretty well sealed, but I, I don't think it's designed for off-road racing, let's be honest. It's designed for a black track. It's actually designed for a drag strip. They use these in the top fuel race cars. Uh, but yeah, so we're going we're gonna to just... I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to mount it in there, because it, it's tight. And then the loom is quite stiff, which doesn't help things. So, how am I going to do this? I'm thinking this goes up in here. This goes, it's going to sit up in here like this. With just enough room in here to be able to get the other plugs on if we need them. Um, and then what I'm planning on doing, if we can put like a bit of a box in here, build a box, doesn't have to be. I've decided, you know, I've sort of realised that it isn't going to be 100% waterproof, at least I want it spray proof, I don't want it anything directly to spray on it, so, you know, if it's fully covered and just have the bottom open or something, so the cable can come out nice and easy, and then I'm going to have a, um, a firewall gland through here, might be a bit higher actually, through here, where the loom's going to come up, go through, and then we'll tie in through all around the engine. This little bad boy is going to get, I think we're going to mount something up in here which will hold all this. And there's a whole lot of stuff that this is going to get stuck to. But that's the general gist. So today, we're just finalising that. Finalise that, and I'll probably go and draw it up on uh, draw up an aluminium enclosure on um, good old fusion, and then send it to my buddy Junior, and hope that he's not ridiculously busy like he always is, and that he can cut it for me and CNC bend it, and then I'll test fit it, and if I've got to weld any brackets to mount it, I will. So yeah about where I'm at with that. There is still a lot of TIG welding to be done. Although I've, I've 
sort of been putting it off because um, I'm just trying to like all these front shock mounts they're essentially tacked in place they're a bit more than tacked but there's still a lot of welding to be done on them um, once all the welding's done then they're all going to get capped filled in and capped um, got to weld me bump pads on the top arms after I remove the top arms and remove all the bearings got to weld, weld these on me, me um, tabs for the sway bar the DFI sway bar but yeah anyway that is a bit of an update of where we're at on the trophy truck as you can see there's still a fair bit to do um, lots to do but if I pull my finger out who knows I really want to race Kalgoorlie so we'll, you know, that's what I'm planning on doing so we'll see um, yeah alright thanks for listening to me talk crap and uh, if you haven't, like us on Facebook, on the Outlaws 4x4 Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram. Um, and yeah, because like, when you follow us, that helps us immensely when we're getting sponsors and whatnot. And I'll give you the tip. We need sponsors. <laughs> Without sponsors, it's very difficult to race, especially for someone like me. You know, obviously something like this costs a lot of money, but that's because of sacrifice. I don't have a million dollar business. I'm just a worker, like most of you. And it just shows that anyone can do anything if you really want it and you're willing to put the hard yards in and have a crack and build it yourself. Cause you know, there's still a lot of stuff here, I get that, and that costs a lot of money, but it's part value, you know. All the labour on this car is free because I've done it all myself. So, and on a truck like this or a buggy or whatever you're building, um, there's massive labour costs involved. Like, you, you look at, like, say if you're going to buy a brand new trophy truck from the States, you know, and they say, oh, yeah, we can knock one out in, like, three to four months or whatever they're saying these days. But you got to realise that's, like, four to five guys working full-time. And usually that doesn't include the guy that welds all the frame. That's, like, based on the fact that they've already got a frame. And I know, like, I think guys have said that it's two weeks full-time just in welding. To, do, to weld out a frame and that's after it's already fully assembled so there's a lot of labour costs essentially you know you're looking at like ah oh, I don't know it'd be like 150 grand worth of labour easy easy if not more anyway who cares just keep working make more money sacrifice more things don't go to the pub. Stop drinking alcohol. I don't drink anymore. It costs too much money. Instead, we buy hose and fittings. Hose and fittings and we drink soda water. Ah. Uh.